Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is uh, learn a little bit about how to use the glob module. Uh, and this is really useful so we can actually just look into a certain directory of files and basically read all the contents of the files in that directory. So if you have, you know, a hundred, let's say height maps or text files or JSON files in a single directory, uh, like I do here. Um, so here I have a bunch of height maps, at least four, uh, just for this simple test. And what I want to do is I want to read in all these height maps here and I want to uh, basically reassemble the uh, height field from these four tiled height maps. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off this uh, video by uh, first learning how to use the glob module uh, so we can read in text from a, all these text files and um, perform. Let's actually take a look here at the example. What we'll do is we'll basically just learn how to create this setup right here. So each text file has a certain line in it and we're going to get all of our files. We're going to read all the lines from all those files and then basically uh, create this set of texts. And so once we learn how to do that, we're then going to go and uh, learn how to read in all those height maps and basically reassemble them into a height field. Okay. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So let's create a geometry node here and I am going to call this my glob test glob test like so and we're going to dive inside i'm going to make a sub network um, because i want to make this a sop level hda and this is going to basically um, get files from directory i'm just going to say dir there all right and so i'm just going to right click on it and say create digital asset and let me put on my namespace and we will do our version number as well and I'll just get rid of these guys here for the actual label. So let's do this. There we go. And I'm actually going to save it into the directory, my actual hip directory here. So I'm just going to make a new HDA folder and let's just save it right there. Hit accept. What I want this to do, I, I basically want this to be a generic uh, file reader so we can read in, you know, text files, or we can read in PNGs, uh, maybe even BGOs, FBX files, right? And so we need a couple parameters in order to do that. The first parameter is the directory in which we should actually uh, look into. And so I'm just going to call this file there. And we'll call this file directory like so. There we go. All that looks good. So this gives us the ability then to go and assign a particular uh, directory to look into. So I have a couple set up here. So what I'm going to do is select this text files folder. We're going to focus on these guys first. And so if you middle mouse click on the label here, you can see it expand to the full path. All right. So right now it's just using the dollar hip because it, the hip file is right next to that particular folder. All right, so next thing that we want to do is we want to um, put in a string and this is going to be our um, suffix or our file type actually. Let's call it file type. That'll be better. So file uh, type. There we go. And the type of files that I want to look for uh, is txt. So text files. Cool. So with that information, we have enough parameters now. We can go jump inside of our HDA here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down a null node here. So let's do a null node and then a Python node. All right. Very cool. So this is going to uh, get all files and uh, set adders, something like that. Uh, and I'm just creating the null node uh, just to make a little network out of it. It really is just this simple. Uh, you don't necessarily need the null node there. So I'm going to put an output node there just to uh, signify that this is the actual output. There we go. Cool. All right. So let's jump into our Python node and get a couple things set up. So make sure you also have the Python shell open. If you don't, you can always hit one of the plus buttons on any of these uh, panes up here and you can actually bring up the um, Python shell like so. Cool. All right. So we need to import a couple modules first. So we're going to import OS and then we're going to import glob. That's going to be the focus of this video. All right. So with that done, uh, we now need to get access to our um, parameters on our HDA. So this folder and the file type. 
All right, so let's do that first. Uh, to do that, we need to get access to the HDA. So we're going to say HDA is equal to node.parent. All right, when uh, they say node, they mean this particular node, so this node that we're actually on. So now we have the parent. Um, what I want to do is I want to say file dir, so that's our variable. And we're going to say hda.parm, and we want to get the file dir. And then we want to eval that as a string, like so. And then we want to get the file type, so we know what files we're searching for. So I'm going to say hda.parm, and we're going to do file type. It's easy as that. And we'll also evaluate that as a string. There we go. So let's uh, make, let's build a path here. So let's uh, put in some comments here. So let's get parm data. And then we're going to get a build path. Because we need to build a path for this all to work, for the glob to work. And so um, our path is going to be equal to our file dir, like so, plus Actually, let's just do that first and then print out that so we can see what we got. So let's say print path. There you go. So we have a path to our text files folder. So now if I were to add on, let's say add on the file type here, you can see now we have this txt. So we need to add a little bit of information uh, for the glob uh, to actually work. And that extra information is a um, asterisk like that, or what is referred to as a wildcard, and then a dot, because we also we want to turn this into a file type lookup. All right, so now if we were to print that, and uh, we also need to make sure we add another plus symbol there. So now you can see we have the wildcard, and we're going to be searching for all things that are text files within that directory. All right, so now that we've got that all set up, um, we can easily now um, get all the files so let's say get all files like so and to do that it's actually quite simple we're just going to say files is equal to uh, glob dot glob and provide it the path to look at like so and to commit the code what i'm doing on the keyboard is i'm using control enter uh, to commit the code rather than just clicking out of there it's just a quicker way to do it so now what we can do is if the glob mo module actually finds a bunch of files using this particular um, file type, uh, it'll fill this files variable, which becomes an array automatically. And uh, then we can actually loop through it for, for each file. So I'm going to say for a file in files, let's just print the file. So we'll say print file and see what we get. So control enter. Now look at that. We get all of the, let's actually, yeah. We're fine there. Let's do that one more time. Make a little bit of space here. And I'll just hit space bar and then control enter. There we go. So we're getting test 001 text, test 002 text, and test 003 text. So what I've done ahead, I've just gone ahead and uh, done this already. So you can see we have our three files in here, right? And in each one of those text files, I have a single line of text just for this example. Uh, once you get the hang of this, you can do what you know whatever you want with these particular files. All right, and so uh, what I want to do now, now that we have access to the file, all right, let's first check. We're just going to check to make sure that it is, in fact, a file. So we're going to say is file. We don't want to uh, work on anything else that is an empty file. All right, so we just want to do a really simple check. We're going to say if it is a file, then we can uh, actually do something with it. All right, and so what I want to do at this point now is I want to get the the text from that text file. And so all we need to do in this particular case is say f um, is equal to open and we're going to, going to use path or actually file excuse me and we just want to read it so I'm just going to use the mode r for that. Alright and so for each one of those let's print um, f dot read line like so. And look at that we have hello python this is how we use the glob module Pretty cool, hey? <laughs> All right, so now we're actually rolling through each file that we found and pulling out the data that we need. Very cool. So let's actually store that and then um, assign or actually add it to a detail attribute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable called lines, and this is going to be equal to an empty array, and we're going to fill it. All right. So to fill it, we're going to say uh, lines is equal to, I'm sorry, lines.append. 
um, f dot read line, like so. All right. And so now, if I were to um, exit out of the loop over here and print our lines array, you can see now we have all those guys in an array, which is perfect because we can add an array now to um, our geometry as a detail attribute. All right, so let's do that. Let's make a little bit of a comment for us. So we're going to say uh, create um, detail adders like so. And what I want to do is I want to say geo. All right, so that's coming from up here. By default, the Python node comes with these two guys already filled out for you. So we need to access the, the geometry uh, for this particular node. And we want to then add an array attrib, like so. And the first argument for this is the who.attrib type. And that's going to be a global for a detail attribute. And then we want to call it lines. And then we want to declare the type of attribute. So attribute data dot string. There you go. Cool. So you notice once I hit control enter on the keyboard, I now get a new array attribute in the detail context here. And so uh, we need to set it. So now I'm going to say geo.set uh, global attrib value. So it's global attrib value. And we want to first assign the name. That's how we get the or search for the actual attribute. And then we want to assign it the lines. And there you go. So now I have my array assigned with those text file values. Uh, the other um, piece of information that we're going to need is the actual count, uh, because we're going to loop through this. And so I need to actually extract out the count. So to do that, um, it's, it's actually uh, quite simple. Uh, we're just going to do a geo dot add attrib. And I need to capitalize that. So add attrib like so. We'll say who dot attrib type. Uh, dot global because we want it to be a detail and we're going to call it count well let's actually make it a little bit more detailed so file count and we're going to do the length of uh, lines right here like so now look at that so now we have a new detail attribute and because it's an int you can assign it right away i found that with uh, arrays you need to first declare or add the attribute array and then assign it all right very cool so now we've got our count and all of our text information. Cool. So we can jump out of here. I'm just going to save this guy like so. Uh, what we need to do now is uh, loop through this. So I'm going to create a for each number loop here. There we go. And I'm just going to wire that guy in like so. And I'm going to call this my loop data. All right. And so at the for each end node here, I am going to get our detail attribute. So I'm going to say detail and we're going to get that information from our get files HDA. And the attribute I'm looking for is the file count. And we just need zero because it's just a single value. So if I were to click on this now, we get a value of three, which matches our file count. Very cool. So on every iteration, uh, I want to um, create some text, some geometry using a font node here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to merge it together like so. And then pass it into the final output here and hit shift S on the keyboard to get my wire designs changed. All right. So how do we get the line from um, our array over here? And so I'm actually going to create a wrangle node for this, so an attribute wrangle node. And we're going to wire it in on this side over here. I'm going to call this curve file. And we're going to create it as a detail attribute. And all I need to do is also wire in the loop data here into that second input. And we need to get the iteration. So I'm going to say int iter is equal to detail. And we want the information from the second input. So we put one right there. And I want the iteration value. There we go. And zero. So that will get us the current iteration, which we can then use to uh, get a particular index value from our array. All right, and so to do that, I am just going to do s at uh, curve file is equal to 
I should say car text like so is equal to um, our detail and actually we already have we don't need to use a detail method here we can just do um, s array at uh, lines like so and then pass in the iter value there and so now our curve text is pretty cool hey and that's the last one on the list because we can uh, come in here and actually do this here so as i roll through it you can see the text is changing awesome so let's go now and set up the font node so we can access that and so to access that uh, we need the two backticks and we need the detail s and i'm going to get the information from our curve file node and we just want the uh, cur text, I think is, is that what I called it? Yeah, cur text. There you go. So now if we take a look here, look at that. Pretty cool, hey? But you'll notice that when uh, we combine them all together, they're all on the same line. So all we really need to do, and you could do this in many ways, but we could also come in here uh, into the font node and change the origin. So we're going to say detail and we want to get it from our loop data node. And we want to do iteration. And there we go. And then let's just negate that. So it goes ascending there. So there you go. It's got hello Python. This is how we use the glob module. Pretty cool, hey? <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, let's move on to uh, doing the uh, height field or height map assembly. All right. So let's do a little bit of height map assembly. So I'm going to call it that. So I'm going to drop down new geonode call it height map assembly. And uh, let's go and grab our HDA. So I'm just going to make sure I save the node and then I'm going to lock this particular instance of it and do a control C to copy it and then paste it in here. Cause we're going to have to update the code to take into account uh, the fact that we're working on height maps. Currently um, our code, assumes that you're going to be working with text files, right? Because we're doing this uh, read line right here. And when it comes to the height maps, we really just need the file, right? And so um, let's update our code to handle that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a new toggle up here. So let's just drag and drop that in here. And we'll say um, this is is height. And I'll call it uh, is height, question mark. And we'll hit apply. So if I toggle this, um, basically we're going to switch the code. And in this case, now I want to look for uh, PNGs, right? You could also do the if check based off of the, the file type as well. I'm just going to use this, this toggle right here for right now. All right. And so we need to go and get that particular value. So we'll, we'll say um, is height for the variable name. And we'll say hda.parm and we'll look for uh, is height like so. And we'll eval that as an int. There we go. Cool. All right. So I'm going to actually move this lines array down just below our glob method there. All right. And I'm going to do an if check. So I'm going to say if not is height. Let me actually put this here. There we, there we go. Not is height, meaning it's uh, false. Then we're going to treat this as a text file and read the lines from it. Else we are going to process it as though it were image files or height maps in this case. All right, and so um, I'm going to store it into an array called height maps, like so. You're more than welcome to change that around a little bit. There's a bunch of ways you could do that. So you could say uh, for a file in uh, files, like so. Uh, again, let's check to make sure that is an actual file. So os.path.isfile. We'll pump in the file value there. And then we want to basically just assign that to our array. So we'll say height match dot append uh, file like so. All right. And we also need to treat our array a little bit differently. So file count will work just fine. And actually we could change this around to files like so. There we go. And so that works just fine. But this one actually should go in here like so because it's dealing with the the text 
All right, so let's just uh, get this situated and make a little bit of space for us. All right, so now we've got that all cleared up. That should work. We just need to come up to our HDA and change our folder to height maps here. And there we go. We got a file count of four, which is perfect because I have four height maps in there. And I need to make sure now I create the height map array attribute. And we'll do that again outside of that for loop there. There we go. And this should be spelled appropriately. Not that it's super important. All right, we'll call this uh, height maps. And we want to pump in uh, height maps, that array, and assign it to the height maps array. That is the detail attribute. There we go. So now we have all of our, and they're really, really long here. <laughs> Let's actually print this guy out over here. Let's just uh, do a print right after this guy. So we'll do a print uh, height maps. There we go. Cool. You'll notice though that we're getting this backslash right here for the um, the height map itself, and that's actually not going to work for our particular um, height map file node. It'll actually throw an error. And so for each one of those files, uh, what we need to do is actually do a file is equal to uh, file dot replace and we need to do an os sep so os sep and replace it with a forward slash like so so now let's actually make a little space for ourselves and i'll just hit space bar control enter you can see that now we've replaced those two backslashes with the forward slash there perfect all right, so now we have all the information that we want. We have our file count and our height maps. And so uh, at this point, let's save our HDA and um, just get our height maps assembled. So I'm going to drop down a uh, for each number. And this will loop through each one of those height maps and basically create a uh, height field for it. So let's do a loop data for the name. That's what I usually like to call it. And then we're going to need a height field. and in this case, you probably want to, you know, wrap this up into an even bigger HDA. But in my case, I know that the, the file size for each tile is 506. All right. So that gives me a tile right there. And then what we need to do is um, get the height field file node like so. All right. And we want to assign this to the height. All right. And the file is the one of the files or the current file in the loop here. If I go to here, it's one of these files. So we need to get that curve file. So let's do an attribute wrangle and we'll say curve file like so. And we'll pump our loop data into that first or second input there. And let's just do a detail. So let's get our iter again. So iter is equal to detail from the second input and we want to get our iteration like so and zero no so that's the current iteration and that needs to be an int there we go and then we want to get that curve file so s at curve file just like we did before is equal to a detail and we can actually just access the array again there we go s at uh, height maps and then the iter there you go. And it's not being populated there. Let's see if we have, oh yeah, there we go. So curve file. Uh, and I do want to actually merge each iteration, but I think I need to change. So we have fetch input. So yeah, that's good right there. Um, let's just make sure that on, on each pass, we just get rid of the curve file. So let's do an attribute delete at the very end here. Once we've done that and we will delete curve file. So each time basically we, we run through this, uh, we should get the curve file. So let me actually select this guy right up here. Yeah. So curve file and let's actually pin that. So then I can see, and it's actually kind of see, cause it's, it's hard to see cause it's so long. Yeah. So there we go. It's working though. All right. So let's, uh, unpin that and Let's now assign that curve file. So we just need to do 
the two back ticks and we're going to do detail s and we're going to get the information from the cur file node we'll say cur file and we don't need uh, to assign anything there and then let's uh, actually merge this in together down here Hey, it looks like this guy's having a bit of a time here. Oh, that's because the curve file is empty on that pass there. So let's go and check our, yep, so we have our height maps right here. It's called height maps and we're getting, so we have S at height maps. Did I misspell it? Let's actually see here. Hold on a second. Let's do, um, another array we'll call this uh, maps is equal to s array height maps what does that give us there yeah so that gives us the same deal so let's just see if i can access that now so we'll just say um at maps iter let's actually click on this guy down here And then click on this guy. Uh, it was pretty odd that this isn't working for me. Let's try this. Sorry about that. Let's do a string and we'll just make a local variable. And that is equal to that guy. And then we'll just say maps is equal to curve file. And that is still ending up empty as well. So I'm thinking that it just doesn't like to access the array that way. So let's try a detail function. We'll say zero. We'll say height maps and zero. See if that works. I'm going to click on this guy. Let's do a single pass here. See that works. So that populates the curve file. Interesting. So that's populating it perfectly. But then when we go and turn it off, oh, I didn't set the count. I am so sorry about that, guys. So let me actually put in the detail here. And I want to get the uh, count from our uh, get files from dir. So we need to do dot dot forward slash get files from dir. And we want to get uh, count or file count. There we go, and then we just need to put in, there we go. Let me turn this off now. All right, so now we're good. I'm really, I really apologize. I don't, did not mean to waste your guys' time there, but it happens with this stuff. All right, so now that we've got that all sorted out, um, what I need to do is um, we could actually set the height here. So let me actually, uh, I also need to set the size. So let's set this to 505. Um, and I'm doing that because uh, when I exported it, I added a one pixel padding to it. Let's put the height scale to 100. So now we have all of our height tiles right here, all stacked on top of each other. So we need to move them uh, basically by the iteration. So I'm going to use a um, height field X form or transform like so. And for this first one, I'm going to take care of the uh, X axis. So we're going to translate it here. So to do that, I'm going to say detail, so detail, and we want to get the information from our loop data, like so, and iteration, and zero, and then I want to do a mod two, uh, so that way we get this pattern of zero, one, zero, one, right? And that, that works for the number of tiles. Uh, so basically I have four tiles, so I cut that in half, and so that would be um, whatever uh, modular you use. And I want to multiply that by 505. All right, so let's take a look. So now we've got these guys um, on the x-axis. Let's do the z-axis now. And um, let me actually just put down another one just so, to keep these guys separated here. So let's actually copy this because it's basically the same. We just want to divide it rather than uh, do a modulus. So I just want to do a divide. And I also need to uh, floor it because we are getting some remainders from that. There we go. Cool. Very nice. All right. So now we've got all of our tiles um, all hooked back up. Very cool. Uh, last thing, really, all you need to do is just drop down a height field splice. 
So height field, uh, splice. And that'll turn it back into a train for you from your height map. So let's say, you know, you're exporting out of like World Machine or Guy or something like that. And all you have are, you know, the height maps. Um, it looks like I am getting a little bit of a pixel offset here. Let's uh, go back up here and let's do 506. Should be 505. Let's actually do a grid spacing. Two was the original grid spacing I used. No, I didn't like that at all. It's basically just scaling it. And I think this needs to be 505 as well. Well, we'll leave it there. And that basically gets us our uh, height map tiles. So I basically got the uh, main concept across. I just have to you know, figure out the one pixel offset there at the ends. Um, but yeah, there you go. So if you also wanted to recenter it, you can also drop down another uh, height field transform over here. And you can do the centroid. There we go. So we do centroid and zero DX. Negate that. And we'll do times 0 0.5, I believe. Nope, we just need the whole thing. And we'll just copy that and do DZ. There you go. So now you're all recentered up. Cool. All right, so that's uh, what I wanted to show. That's how we go and use the uh, glob method to go and find files. Thanks so much.